Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Dr. Kristen Lloyd, author of Bariatric Mindset Success and founder of Bariatric Mindset. Today, I'm here to talk to you about crisis mode. And um, crises wait for no one. And um, life, kind of like a roller coaster, will take twists and turns, and it'll come out of nowhere when you least expect it. And so this is the issue that I see people struggle with the most. Um, grief, loss, crisis mode. And so these are the issues where people are really taken by storm and they don't know how to handle it or what to do. And this is because when you go into crisis mode, you go into autopilot. And so this is why I recommend absolutely every, every, every single post-op patient have a crisis management plan um, as part of your post-op plan. And you might be thinking, well, how do I know? Like, none of us know. None of us know when there's going to be a crisis plan or a crisis coming. And so this is why we need to have a plan. Most people have a spare tire and a jack and maybe even a um, tire repair kit in their trunk. So I'm not saying that you need to carry anything around with you in your trunk, um, but I do think that you should have um, at least a few meals on hand in the freezer that are easy that you can heat up because that would be very, very important for you if God forbid there's a crisis. And again, we never know when it's gonna happen and it happens to different people at different times. And so this isn't about being doom and gloom. This is actually about preparation, right? So crisis preparation, crisis management is about helping yourself and thinking ahead. And most people are not thinking ahead. So here I am coming to you, um, reminding you how important it is to have a plan and to prepare. And I'm sure that you all have heard the saying, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Now. Nobody wants to plan for a crisis, and I understand that. Yet, some things that can be super helpful are a list of places and a list of foods that you can eat if you did have to eat out. So grab a sheet of paper and name all of the places around you or near your relatives, because you don't know, it may not be your house that you're staying at. It could be a relative's house. And think of um, the different places that you might go out to eat and write um, some items down that you could have at those places and go ahead and include fast food restaurants. But you need to know what your order is going to be ahead of time so that you're not caught up in, a, in an emotional wreck and you're like, yes, give me a number two, a number three, <laughs> you know, give me some extra fries. No, 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 right? When you are in an emotional space, what ends up happening is you will, um, you have zero willpower. So you're making decisions from that place of emotion, which may not be the best thing for you. And you may not be making choices that are in the best interest of your body. Um, so go ahead and write down what your order could be, what your non-negotiable order would be. And that's going to help you in advance, right? So make sure that you have that list somewhere. Um, it's always great to have, um, frozen meals. And um, so whenever I do meal prep, I will do a couple extra days and I will rotate out my freezer every three months so that every three months I have at least an extra week full of meals um, in my freezer so that um, if there were a crisis, God forbid, I hope there's not, but that I have those in my freezer and then I rotate through them um, every three months so that I'm keeping my freezer stocked and fresh. Okay, then it's also important that you have a list of your most important numbers, um, you know, a list of your doctor somewhere, a list of um, everybody that would be important for your family. Now that specifically isn't weight loss surgery, but again, when we're thinking about having a crisis management plan, having a folder in a drawer in your kitchen or somewhere, this is just going to help you with some of those details. And then the other thing that you could do is make a list of um, the things if you did have to take a trip, 
what would, you know, what would you take with you? What would you need to take with you? And so sometimes having a toiletry kit already packed would also be important. So in this process, what often happens if somebody is going through a difficult time is they totally forget themselves. They're not drinking water. They're not getting enough sleep. They're not getting proper nutrition. And then it lead, it can lead to emotional eating. Most of the time it leads to emotional eating. And so this is where you also need to know what support you need emotionally. And oftentimes people will wait too long until they get a therapist. So you might, um, if you don't already have a therapist, you would want to consider that earlier rather than later. And to look at what um, struggles you might be going through personally. Most often among the clients that I serve, I will see individuals who have the loss of a parent. And so that is a great, great loss. It can shake you to your core. And that's something that um, a lot of times people are grieving, they're struggling, and then again, as a result, they're prioritizing everyone else other than themselves, and they're potentially emotionally eating. So it really is important that you find some different ways to nurture yourself emotionally, you know, that you um, are doing some proper things for self-care, um, that if you are struggling with sleeping, that you talk to your doctor right away, that you are getting your water in, and that you're also allowing yourself to grieve if that is what's coming up. But what is most important is that you have a list of other activities that could help you to self-soothe that don't have to do with food. And again, this is where the emotional eating comes in because people really struggle with emotional eating and overeating when they're going through a crisis situation or when they're going through a loss. So giving you a couple different tips, have a list of all the restaurants that you'll go to and what your preferred order will be, your bariatric friendly order will be. Secondarily, make sure that you have some freezer meals, you might even make a list to yourself. You could even write a letter to yourself, dear future self who might be going through a crisis. You know, I'm sorry that you're going through this. Um, I, here's what I want you to know, right? You could even write that in there. And that would be something that's super, super, super important for you to know. Um, this is where this is. This is where this is. Because when we're going through a crisis, it's almost like a magnified fight flight. And so we're not necessarily thinking of the things that are very practical. So this is where if you do put a plan together in advance, it's going to help you immensely um, when you really don't wanna have to think about little things like this. So making sure that you have the food, having a list of different places to go to, making sure that you're getting adequate sleep, rest, um, that you are getting your water in, and then also make sure that you're getting your supplements. So supplements are very important. So another thing you could do is it put at least five days of supplements in your toiletry bag. And then that could be something that you could also switch out every three months just to make sure that they're fresh. So as much as I hope that nobody has to go through a crisis, um, it's something that at some point all of us will go through, unfortunately. And these are some tips for helping you to cope ahead, to cope in advance, to do some things to set you up so that hopefully in the first three months, six months, nine months of doing a plan like this, nothing happens, right? But it's better to um, be prepared than not. And it's better to um, set yourself up for success than to be thinking on the flip side, oh my gosh, how did I gain this weight? Um, I've seen people gain 20 pounds, 30 pounds, 50 pounds from a loss. And so really, um, I'm sure that you've also heard that, um, that saying an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. So really, really, really important that you get um, on the prevention side and look towards how you can help yourself in the, in the long run. So those are the tips I have for you today. I hope they help and um, start thinking ahead, planning ahead, and I will see you on the next video. Best.